Welcome back to the Penn Live Wrestling Podcast. We're looking back on sectionals weekend. First stage of the postseason has begun, and we're going to preview a little bit later in the show, the District 3, the AAA um, Wrestling Championships, which are coming up this weekend. I'm Dustin Hawkinsmith. Dave Heckard's here with me as usual. We'll get into sectionals and districts in a little while, but we're first joined by Dominic Frontino from Shippensburg, now a three-time sectional finalist, a first-time sectional champion at 152 pounds as a junior. Dom, Welcome to the show. It's good to have you, and we appreciate you taking a little bit of time to talk about uh, your season and talk about, you know, what it took to get here, which we'll touch on in a moment. But good, good to have you. Yes, thank you guys for having me. I want to, I want to have you in a second start. You, I, I want you to tell your comeback story. Um, I, I and and what it took to be here. Uh, what timeline you were given by doctors, how you defied timelines uh, to, to get to this point. But I, the first thing I want to ask you actually is, um, so we're standing by the podium. I've been doing this for a lot of years. I've been talking to interviewing people by a podium for a long time. You were the first one ever to um, bend down and give your little brother a kiss on the head uh, after, after you won a sectional title. And, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, we were laughing about it before we started recording, but you are an old soul. And I wonder how you got to this place where you are like a 40 year old trapped in a 17 year old's body. How, where does that come from? Uh, uh, I have no idea. I love my brother dearly. And, you know, I'm trying to start him <laughs> off on the right path, you know, bring him to wrestling. I'm not trying to push it too much on him, but, you know, hopefully he can be exactly where I, I want him to be better than I am eventually. But my, my dad has, you know, influence, both my parents influenced me to be super mature as I get older. It's a nice thing to have. <laughs> uh, so walk me through the the, the injury. Uh, you tore, what, your ACL, MCL, right, yeah. uh, in May. And you were meniscus. told, and your meniscus. And you were, you were told at that point in time how long it would be, and then how long did it actually take, and what did you do to get back on the mat so quickly? All right, so I tore my ACL MCL meniscus uh, on Memorial Day, and I it took a, a pretty long time to get, actually get it appointment to be able to get it checked out. And originally, they told me they thought nothing was wrong with my knee because I could I could still bend around, I could still jump on it, and they're like, you know, you guys, we you can just rehab it and think you know it can be okay. But then we ended up getting an MRI, and she was like, oh, never mind, <laughs> you tore all three completely and we eventually got got to my my we found the doctor that I wanted to get it done with and we've got an appointment and he checked it out for me and he told me it was going to take up to a year it was going to be a year and he but my doctor was also uh, a wrestler he wrestled for Penn State Dr. Jim Martin he was a four-time All-American one-time champ and um, he kind of understood that I wanted to get back to the wrestling season obviously and I immediately, as soon as he told me, that, I was like, so what are the chances of me recovering, you know, six months earlier <laughs> than the timeline he gave me? And he said, it's possible you have to have, you know, we're going to have to, you're going to work really hard. You're going to be disciplined. Everything you put in your body is super important. You have to be, you have to make sure that you're the physical therapist, you know, where I'm going to have physical therapy or put, you know, give me the right exercises, not overtraining me, you know, icing it every single night getting getting the swelling down and getting my flexibility back was the most important part and it, it did end up coming back really quick i did all the right things and you know i was seeing him monthly because it was a two and a half hour drive to go to where we went to go see him so i was going to see him monthly and he you know it kept improving he kept saying it looked better and better and better and one thing i forgot to mention before i even um was able to get surgery i was i had to be able to bend my leg fully back because it was too swollen that to, he couldn't cut it open because it was so swollen that I had to be able to bend my uh, leg fully back to my butt before I could even get surgery. So, and he said, if I wasn't able to do that before surgery, I would have never got my flexibility back. I, I, I mean, the injury, the physical part of that, I, I think is, is tremendous how you overcame that. And, and I think what most people don't understand is like the mental side of an injury, right? Like you get hurt, maybe you're, you're in May, you're training for, you know, in the off season for the upcoming season. And, you know, you take an injury like that and, and it takes you back physically. Yeah. But like the mental part of that is, is tough too. And, 
and, and, you know, I mean, you're an athlete, you go through injuries and, and I just remember like different times of my, my careers that, and I, I suffered injuries, nothing to the extent of yours, but even missing practices, maybe missing a game in, in college, like it, it, it taxes on you mentally. You know what I mean? You start to doubt yourself a little bit, um, you know, maybe even feel sorry for yourself a little bit. So talk to me a little bit, you know, shed some light on that, man, because I think, you know, a big part of physically recovering is the mental part of that. And then just kind of tell us what you did as far as, you know, your mentality through this whole thing. Yeah. One thing I, I was very blessed to be, have, to have the, I was always overly optimistic. And as soon as it happened, you know, the people around me that I was, you know, you gotta be positive. You gotta tell me you gotta be positive. My parents are super positive people. My physical therapy, you know, telling me, oh, you're going to be back in no time. That And he knew the first day I go, I had surgery. The next day I went to physical therapy. I was working my leg up. I couldn't even pick it up. I couldn't pick my own leg up. It, it was I, like, it, I was using all my strength. that wouldn't even get off the bed that I was laying on. They're like, oh, don't worry. That's how everyone is. Not how everyone is. <laughs> and, you know, um, but just being overly optimistic about everything. It, it, uh, even when things weren't going well or if things were going well, you have to always look at the positives, no matter what, what situation you're in. That's what, and that's what really, I feel that carried me to be able to recover so fast. Now, how about physically the silver lining is, so you're a, a sophomore, 138 pounder. You're pretty lean for, for that. The, now the silver lining in this situation is without all, all your mobility in the lower half of your body, you got jacked up top. You're now a full 152. What did you do and how, and how would you measure your strength? Like, can you measure and say, hey, before the injury or, or last year I was benching this and now I bench that. Walk me through how you build up that strength because that could be a real difference maker for you too. Well, one thing I definitely started lifting a lot when, because that's all I was like, instead of going to wrestling practice, I didn't wrestle, I didn't lift as much as my freshman and sophomore year. But since I wasn't able to, go to wrestling practice every day like I usually did I was I had to figure find something to do to occupy you know my time so I was going to the weight room I was lifting every single day I had weights in my basement I have a personal trainer that I lift with and he knew it I was just upper body everything from my hips up and there's also exercises that I was doing on just my one leg because when you build your one leg muscle up it actually helps your other your other leg when it was healthy to be able to um build muscle faster because it, it sees the other one and it, it kind of reacts to it but I, I definitely lift lifted a ton since I wasn't able to wrestle and that definitely helped me fill out this year and I got a little bit bigger now do you think like uh you know when you started back this season and started wrestling did you find yourself like a little hesitant with some things on it um you know what I mean until you kind of felt it out and and kind of realized what you can and can't do with it talk talk to me about that a little bit all right so first of all I was given this huge brace that he was like, you know, you're probably gonna have to start wrestling, <laughs> wrestling with this. So I, I remember I was wrestling, I was practicing with Danana. I was like, holy cow, this thing feels like I, it's like my right leg is two legs and my leg, my left <laughs> leg is one. So I'm carrying a whole nother leg on. And then I remember I wrestled my first three matches with that Biglerville duels. And that thing was just heavy. Like everything else in my body, I was conditioned very well. I was always conditioned well. There was just my right leg was like, oh, so it kind of felt like my feet weren't moving as well when I had that thing on. So I eventually, my knee feels, uh, my knee feels great. You know, it's hundred percent. And I did ditch the, I didn't stop wearing the brace. I just have a knee pad and it, it works really well. And it, it helps me move my feet a little bit more, no, no fatigue. But what, uh, another thing that was that I had to get over there, my knee is numb. I have no feeling in, in that part of my knee where he cut, where he cut it open. So when, every time I'm on the mat, it's like, it feels like it catch it. it. When I have just my knee and my bare knee on the mat, it just, it feels like it catches on the mat. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? If I shoot, it feels like it get, there's no give. Yeah. So it, that I had knee no, pad just offers like a little extra stability for yeah, you, you yeah, know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. just to keep it, keep it tight. Keep yep. it. And so, and it's not going any weird positions. Yeah. You talk, you talked about conditioning too. And how, how did you go about, um, maintaining or when, when it came time that you were able to get a little bit more um, permission to, to do more things, how did you stay conditioned or get conditioned? Because, you know, looking at you on Saturday, you look to be in very, very good shape, which, you know, not a lot of people can say that when they have, you know, a knee injury the way that you had. Um, one thing, my physical therapist kept me in peak 
condition. I, even when I couldn't do anything with my legs, I, I swear they did so many amazing things in my physical therapy. I give them so much credit. They were so, they were so amazing and they helped. There was like, there was bikes that were just for my arms. You know what I mean? You just uh, go circles with your arms. I was doing that. And I was doing stuff with my, um, with dumbbells where I was doing and putting them in circles. And then I had to do, and eventually when I was just like, kind of like lifting, eventually when they doctor cleared me to start doing squats and all that stuff again, it was just immediately, I was going to get on the, get on the bike, get my legs moving, running sprints, you know, on the track, running whatever, you know, doing everything that I possibly could to get conditioned. Cause that's, I think one of the most important things in wrestling is that if you, you, you know, you're conditioned, you can go with anyone. Yeah. I, you know, moving, moving from the injury. Um, I do want to talk some about your, your wrestling, man. And I, and I, you know, congratulations on a good weekend, uh, you know, beating uh, Gabe in the finals. And, you know, I think both of you two are going to be guys that, you know, are wrestling at the, at the state tournament here at the end of the year. And, and, uh, you know, it was a great one. Well, my favorite, like, final. That's the one, like, I felt like even, you know, fans, people this weekend were sticking around to, to watch that final. You had two, you know, high-achieving high achieving guys there and, and you and Gabe and, and all that. And, um, you know, I think for you, uh, your your best attribute, and Dustin kind of hit on this earlier, is is your sense of maturity and and your sense of focus. And, and I feel like, you know, before the match, I was talking, we were all hanging out, talking to some buddies and you know, what do you think about the, the Frontino and Belga match? And, and I said, well, I know like Dom, like is, is such a, such a focused kid and he seems to always win the close ones. You know what I mean? And to win close matches, it takes a lot of poise, a lot of maturity. And, and, and Dustin kind of hit on that a little earlier. So, you know, again, I'm going to ask you again, like, you know, where, you know, where does that come from, man? Cause I, I mean, you know, you're, you're a smart wrestler. You're, you're a, you know, you're a tough wrestler, you, 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 you're focused. I mean, you, you never panic. And, and those intangibles, uh, the mental side of wrestling are all, all very, very important to be successful. I mean, heck, you want a district title as a freshman. You know, in order to do that, there, there's, there's a sense of maturity about you. And um, just kind of shed, shed some light on that. Like, you know, and, and, and I think like, you know, other wrestlers need to hear and even, even young people and you know, that, that winning and losing are just byproducts of, of what you do off the mat, man. And, and, and you seem like such a good kid, a good student. And, and, you know, just, just talk to us a little bit about, you know, how important that, that side of it is. To you. Uh, yeah, that's very important. But uh, one thing I was saying, I was never, when I was younger, my parents, like I, I before you came on, um, we talked about how my, I'm the first one in the family to ever wrestle. So my parents are kind of learning as I go, as I go with it. So I was never, my parents never pushed me to the max where I got tired of wrestling. I always, it, it was always my choice. Whenever I wanted to go to practice, I wanted to practice. You know, I love wrestling for me, not because for anyone else. You know what I mean? And that, I feel like that really helped me evolve in the sport and get, go to different levels. And I've also had so many different coaches over the, over the span of 12 years that I've been wrestling. I've been to, you know, Young Guns, M2, yeah, I wrestled with Bentley, um, Brian Morrow, the, all just great, great coaches, you know, the, the best in the country. And I feel like you take little b bits and pieces of, from every single one of those coaches and you put it into re your wrestling IQ and you just get keep getting smarter and, and you're, you focus and you want to just keep getting better and you just love it. You just absorb the sport. And it's, it's and as soon as you, you know, you see uh, improvements in your matches and you, it, you just love, it's just like lifting. That's kind of one thing how I got into lifting a lot is when, you know, you start lifting for two weeks, you see a little bit of improvement. You lift for a month, you know, you see start, start muscles to start gaining. It's like, holy cow, this is. Yeah, it's like an addiction. Like, you, you know, you it is, it, yeah. that's exactly how it, when you get better at wrestling, you know, you beat, you beat a kid that you never beat before. You, you're, you're in practice. You know, you're wrestling with top guys in the country. You take them down a couple times, you know, you know, just and you never used to take them down. It's those improvements. You're like, holy cow, I, I just want to keep going back at it. I want to keep getting better and better and better. And that's really how I evolved. And, and I'm very thankful for my parents to be able to drive me all over the place. <laughs>
Oh, yeah, yeah, it's it's huge, especially when you're talking about going to M2 and places like that. That's not a that's not a small commitment. And whether you're yeah. driving yourself or not, that's a big time commitment for everybody. Um, yes. you know, to to go with your wrestling style, and we talked about this a little bit too. I think um, being poised and being calm and being patient, those are all things. But how do you um, how do you kind of weigh being the right amount of patient? and also being able to attack and to wrestle with urgency too. The patient is a strong suit of yours and it, it really, your ability to kind of hang in there made some part of the difference when you beat Gabe, you took him down with 12 seconds left, your patience and your ability to kind of see the big picture helped. But at the same time, you know, is there a part of you that says, okay, I gotta, I gotta go a little bit more. I gotta maybe instead of waiting for the window to create the window. Uh, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't like, uh, all of my matches to end up how Gabe and I did, you know, I like to score more points, uh, you know, not make my dad, my parents and all my coaches have heart attacks, but um, you know, I, I do, you also don't like we were talking before, you don't want to force anything. You don't want to make stupid decisions. You know, you want to be overly, you want to be overly offensive to where it's hurting you. You know, it's going to be a negative effect on you, but there's points in the time where you got to be pushing the pace all, all the, all the time, you, you know, and it might not, some of the things that you do in the first period might, might not be tiring them out in the first period, but by the third period, it's wearing them out. You know what I mean? Just little tax on them, little to keep taking away, taking away. And eventually the points are going to start pouring on. That's where, that's really what I focus on. Now, I mean, speaking on, of, of scoring points, man, I mean, looking at your, your district bracket here coming up, um, that 152 pound weight class is, is loaded, man. So you're going to have to score some points this, this weekend to, to win and, and, and get through that bracket. Talk to me about how you feel, you know, about your bracket here this weekend um, at districts. I mean, you got, you know, looking probably your second match is going to be against the Gonzalez kid, a returning district champ. Um, you know, you have the, the Edwards kid from Hempfield, the Newell kid from Gettysburg on your side. You know, talk to me a little bit about your plan here um, as far as, you know, moving through your bracket. And, and I think, I mean, I argue, and Dustin, you could agree with me here. I think 52 is arguably you know, the toughest weight in our district right now. And, and uh, you know, so talk to me a little bit about, about your weight class and, and, and how you feel. Uh, first, I, I look at, look, looking at my bracket, uh, I just want to dominate. I don't I, I didn't care where I was putting a bracket. You know what I mean? Whoever steps out in front of me on the line, I'm looking to dominate and keep scoring points, go after them, no matter who it is. You know, they could be four-time undefeated, you know, champ or whatever, whatever they are. It doesn't matter. You, you got to, give 100 no matter who it is you go out score points against everyone get on my offense you know they shoot I score and I shoot I score that's super, that's my mentality going to every single match and I feel I feel great at 152 you know my weights my weights great um uh I'm excited to get into it you know it's I love the challenge I love yeah. the challenge you better say it's a highly bracket you know to It'll be great staying on top of the podium at the end of the week. And, and and most competitors do. Like if you're a true competitor, man, and, and you're 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 a, you're a wrestler, you're a competitor. I mean, you know, good wrestlers like wrestling. Good wrestlers, you, you like That's to challenge yourself. You, you like yeah, competing against the best. Um, you know, and uh, no, I, I think you're gonna have a good weekend. And again, like the best advice like I could give you, and and, and is just. The only match that matters is the one you're about to wrestle. You know what I mean? And you know, don't look, don't. Look, that's it, man. No, no doubt. Um, so no, I, I'm excited to to come watch you this weekend and, and see how that weight class unfolds. And um, there's no doubt that you're going to be a guy that I, I think people are going to have to go through to, to get the gold medal. So um, yeah, man, good luck this weekend. Thank you so much. Hey, what, one last question for you, Dom, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you get running. I just wanted to kind of speak to the, the, the concept of challenge. And I think last year, you know, last season, uh, you can probably look back on it and, and just say, you know, you didn't quite get what you wanted out of it, I'm sure. Um, and then you have the injury. Um, how has a year of challenges and injury and kind of like that, that valley helped kind of prepare you and make you a better person and wrestler right now? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, last year, I did come up short. I, you know, it was a crazy year because of COVID and all that stuff. They had the Super Regionals and a bunch of stuff changed. But um, I, I've always worked hard every single year that I wrestled. But this year, I felt like I've worked my freaking butt off. You know what I mean? As hard as I could possibly work to get back and be able to wrestle this season was just unbelievable to me. And I'm, I'm you know, thankful for every single moment I have i be able to wrestle. That's why I just want to absorb all. I love wrestling. That's what I want to do every single day. 
now I'm going to get in the room, just keep getting, keep getting better and better. And I, I love working hard and just going at it every single day to be able to, you know, beat the best guys in the country and, and the state and hopefully come on top in March when it matters. There you go. That's Dominic Frontino, junior from Shippensburg, sectional champion, looking to become a two-time district champion. That's happening this weekend, Friday and Saturday at Spring Grove. Dom, thanks for jumping on with us, buddy. Yep. Thanks for having me, guys. Have a nice day. Yeah, good luck this weekend, man. Go get them. Well, what a kid, Dave. I mean, you and I had talked about, you know, Dom Frontino before, but um, has it together, self-starter disciplined and amb- ambitious smart and all that stuff is sh- it, it shows up in his wrestling and you know um I- i'm looking forward to and i, I think we're going to see it happen I mean, both of these guys dom and gabe and we'll talk about district brackets there in a minute but uh dom and D- gabe have some work to do to get back to the finals but i'm hopeful we see that one again yeah no i i uh you always want the good guys like the Dom Frontinos of the world to do well too, you know, like you're always cheering for those guys. They, they do everything right. And I know he's, he's an outstanding student as well. And just a smart kid. And like, I, I love the call, like the old soul. And, and, and like, I, I feel like that's, that's, that's what he is. And I mean, he, he's a good kid to have on a good guest. And, uh, but I do agree that 152 pound weight class is, is just a bear. And, um, you know, I'd love to see the final of those two again, you know, but they're going to have some work to do for sure. For sure. Yeah. And, and we'll touch on it. Actually, as we, as we make our rounds here, um, touching briefly on sectionals, then we'll go briefly through um, district three, just the triple a brackets. I'll do double a uh, with Hunter Wallace a little bit later in the week here on the Penn live wrestling podcast, but we'll focus on triple a here. And, and one of these that, you know, looking at section one, uh, from last weekend at um, Governor Mifflin. One thing that's going to influence that 152 pound br- uh, bracket, uh, JT Hogan from Daniel Boone, who's kind of a forgotten guy in that bracket. Uh, he went into overtime and beat Griffin Gonzalez of Lebanon, who was a, a district champ last year. Um, and now Griffin Gonzalez ends up running into, in all likelihood, Don Frontino in the, in the quarterfinals. One way or the other, with the way the brackets are set up, he was going to get a tough kid. But uh, coming out of that section, so Griffin Gonzalez will now be on uh, on Frontino's side in the quarterfinal round. One of probably, you know, like seven, eight, nine really good either first round or quarter quarterfinal matchups that you'll see in this tournament. Yeah, and then on the reciprocal end, like, like the, you know, Frontino beating Belga, I mean, that's who Hogan's going to get second match. So that's going to be you know, that weight class right there is, is going to be good. And, uh, you know, coming out of that section, I, you know, the Hogan kid is, is like you said, and, and was a kid that kind of came on as a freshman and, and you, you kind of like opened some eyes a little bit. And I, I, you know, last year, I don't think things worked out for him too well is probably where he wanted to be in the postseason. But um, here's a guy now that 152 pounds that, um, again, he's 25 and one, you know, he just knocked off a, a returning district champ. And uh, again, just adding to the depth of that 152 pound weight class that we knew was going to be, you know, a tough, a tough bracket from, from, you know, beginning of the year. So, um, and again, coming from that section, I mean, that, that, that section really, I don't want to say screwed things up, but man, did it really you know, shake things up a bit and it's going to give us a good quarterfinal round. Well, and that's where, you know, with, with the pre-slotted brackets, when, when you have one section that's inordinately strong or one section where the third place guy was somehow the best wrestler out of that section, right. it can cause some chaos. And you're, you're seeing that coming from, uh, from that section uh, here in districts. Uh, another thing I think it's worth noting um, coming out of that section, uh, Mike Trainer from Octorera, a kid who feels like he, it's been, it feels like he's been around for about eight years wrestling <laughs> at 145 pounds. That kid is a powerhouse kid. He beat um, the Fisher kid from Conestoga Valley who had beaten Reagan Lefevre twice out of three matchups with him. So you see um, and uh, you, you kind of see. Uh, some depth there. You see Mike trainer, you know, don't, don't forget about this kid. I mean, I think he's, he's positioned to be a handful um, in, in the district tournament. You know, especially at a 45, I feel like, you know, I know the fever is a returning district champ there, but like you said, Fisher beat him twice this year. And I mean, that, that weight class, I don't want to say it's kind of wide open a little bit. Like there, you know, you, you know, to, to, to pick somebody to win 145 right now, I can't, I can't really do that. I, I don't know who's going to come out on top. So um, he's definitely a guy though that that adds into that that 145 pound weight class and really a school that we're kind of unfamiliar with. You know, Octorera has been on the double A side for a long time now, and you know now they're in triple A, so you know, that'll be a uh, you know some interesting flavor to add to to the district bracket. 
two guys um, coming out from there who I think are positioned as pretty firm favorites in their weight classes for districts as well. Tucker Hogan, who's a sophomore, JT Hogan's brother. Uh, he looked outstanding over the summer. I watched him run through a major Jagger Gray in an offseason tournament. Uh, long kid. You saw the makings in, the, in um, what was, I think it was 160. Or did he wrestle? I think he wrestled 172 last year. He wrestled. Yeah, I, I, I think Nick he did. I think, you're, I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. He, did, he was there last year, too. So he he's back and uh, I think a contender at 172. And then Johnny Miller from from Exeter, uh, sort of not somebody that we talk about a great deal. We don't talk a lot, a lot about Exeter anyway. But um, Johnny Miller is is a a really good candidate to win a state medal. So both of those guys, as, as these sections are coming together, certainly worth watching um, at, at districts this weekend. Last year, when I saw Tucker Hogan wrestle uh, as a freshman at 172 pounds um holy cow I think you know I, I just this 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 frame and and all I kept thinking is you know there's some college coach out there right now saying this is going to be my 97 pounder in in four or five years you know I mean he has the height he's physical and I mean he, he is tough man I was I was really impressed with him last year uh, you know at the, at the district tournament and uh you know he got to the finals where you know he and he gave uh he gave Nictor all, all he wanted last year you know and uh so you know, I I think that 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 could set up to be a good final, as as you mentioned earlier, with with Bartram and, and him, and that'd be at least a good one to, to see. Uh, and not that somebody else can't come off the other side of the bracket, but you know, just just looking at a quick glance, um, that would be a, a nice final to see with those two. So. Looking at looking at section two, Central Dolphin was a runner up out there. I think they got like 11 guys through, I think was the number um, 11 out of 13. They got through to districts, which, you know, Swags was pretty vocal last year. And a lot of coaches were vocal about this last year, just having two guys get through. Swags had a lot of third placers last year who didn't get through um, to, dis, to the, dis, the, the district round. Now he's got those guys, Matt Repost, Ryan Garf, as you would expect, kind of leading the way. They win their section. Uh, the big story from section two was Nick. Nico Tassi from Warwick uh, going into overtime late takedown and regulation, and then a really impressive scramble drill situation to get the winning touchdown or touchdown takedown in overtime to win that 113 pound bracket. Um, and, and I would expect, I mean, there's a really good chance that you see these two guys again this weekend. No, there is. And I know the first time they wrestled, Williams jumped out to a nice lead and Tachi came back and it was like one of those deals where, Tachi didn't win the battle there, but he, he, he won a little bit of like that confidence deal. Like, you know, I mean, where, Hey, like I, I can, I can beat this guy. And then, you know, that's the result. And, and, you know, again, the Williams kid, obviously returning state champ. I mean, you know, I mean, he, he's a tough customer and just an impressive, impressive uh, job by Nico Tachi. I mean, even, even the sense of like, you know, where he started to where he's at now, the hard work that kids put in like is, is really commendable. And I think I, I, I agree. I, 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 I wouldn't bet my house on it, but like, let's be honest, like I wouldn't be surprised to see those two, you know, again in the finals. And, and again, you know, bridging from Caden Williams, you know, you see Camden back at, at 120, you know, which, which adds some flavor to, to again, 120 pound weight class um, is, is a real tough weight class and him being back just adds to that. Uh, and statewide too, a state 120 is on the list of statewide uh, maybe being the toughest bracket. Uh, it, it's up there if it's not, if it's right. not the toughest. So uh, Cam New Williams coming back, he was 11 and three coming into the weekend. Uh, we hadn't seen him for a long time. I didn't, I honestly didn't know what his status was going to be, but he's uh, he's back. And the question is going to be, and we'll touch on this later. Is he the same Cam, Cam New Williams as we saw all the way up through super, super regionals last year? Is he able to overcome, you know, the lack of mat time this year? Is he, is he that, that real state contender? I think he still has to prove that. And I think this weekend will go a long way for him. Uh, section three, how about Chambersburg uh, going through the season that they had and the ups and downs and the injuries and, and all the things, you know, uh, Matt Menser said he felt like a manager, like he was just managing guys coming and going, being in, out, in the lineup, out of the lineup. That's the third straight year they won section three, which, you know, they, they weren't on the, on the, on the, on the list of district three team contenders for all kinds of reasons. So now they go in there with Carlisle and Cumberland Valley and Cedar cliff and, you know, all these schools and Northern and, and they're the, the sectional champs. And um, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm stunned by it, but it was a really good performance by those guys. It was. And, and again, just the emphasis that coach Mentor puts on the postseason. you know, every postseason 
his guys wrestle hard and, and they're ready to go. And, and this year was, I mean, I remember seeing him at the Cumberland Valley match and I mean, I mean, he just looked like a defeated human being, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> he said about the managing part and, uh, but you know, good for them. And, and again, the, the whole, the whole idea, like we said, this whole year, just keeping it together and, and keeping that focus. And, uh, you know, his guys did that this, this weekend. And you start, you know, Saturday being there, you start looking at the brackets and you're like, wow, man, Chambersburg has a nice, a nice set of kids here right now, you know? And, uh, you know, I, I mean, good for them. And, uh, you know, I didn't realize it was their third straight team title, but that is, that is impressive, man. So, uh, you know, again, kudos to that, that crew there. Uh, we talked about Frontino and Belga quite a bit. I, I, I do think, you know, we will see that one again in the finals this weekend. Uh, I'm, I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm writing a story about uh, Anthony Braschino from Cumberland Valley, a sophomore, um, pinning his way to a 160 pound title. Uh, he beat Anthony D'Angelo in the semifinal round, which I thought was his biggest obstacle on his way there. But I did talk to him and, and, and I did feel like, you know, everybody knows that Braschino can wrestle. Everybody knows that he's tough. Everybody knows that, that he's so sound and solid and all that. Um, I, I kind of felt like he needed something of a breakthrough like this one to win a tournament of any kind, to get a big win or two of any kind, to really propel him into that next level. And I feel like that might be happening in front of our eyes right now. Yeah, no, I mean, he, he's another specimen of a kid and, 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 you know, had a nice season for Cumberland Valley last year as a freshman and, and, uh, and really like he had, a, again, the, the, the two guys advancing, there was a mishap there in his bracket. Uh, you know, he was up 10, nothing at the end of the first period and got pinned and it just completely, you know, messed his whole, whole deal up there. And, and I That's think, it. and I think, you know, I, I'm not saying the kid would have went to States, but I mean, at the end of the day, he would have been a guy that would have been a tough out at districts and got that experience. And I just, I remember last year being so disappointed, you know, as a, as his coach, when he got pinned, you know, more for the experience that he lost um, to feeling like that happy for him now that, you know, he had a good sectional tournament is heading into districts with a, a sectional title. So, and he's tough, man. I mean, he, he, uh, strong kid, you know, works hard and, uh, you know, it's good again to see, to see him achieve that. So I agree with you though. You could be making of something there. I feel like. Yeah, and I think just a, a, li a little boost of confidence can, can go a long way at this point, uh, feeling like he, he can wrestle with all these guys. And he, like you're right. I mean, deprived of that opportunity last year just by, you know, some fluky stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. One other result I wanted to get your opinion on was Travis Armstrong from CD East. We've talked about him a couple times along the way here. This is a big, physical, strong, tough, menacing kid. And Zach Evans is no slouch. And I don't know, you know, he pinned Zach Evans last year at sectionals too, but this one in 35 seconds uh, was one of the more stunning outcomes I felt like of all, of the entire finals. Yeah. I mean, I, um, uh... I mean, at first glance, I, I just figured Zach would win. I, I thought, you know, I, that would, that's the guy I would pick. I thought, you know, the competition Zach wrestled, like the, you know, the workout partner with having height with him to work out. And, you know, he had a good showing at down at Escape the Rock. Um, but I, I love it. I, I, you know, again, you, you know, Travis Armstrong comes out and I mean, throws him on his back in 35 seconds. And, and, and like that is a sectional champ. And, and at the 215 pound weight class, another weight class where I feel like there's some, there's some solid kids in, but it's kind of wide open. So it'll be interesting to see what he can do this, this coming weekend here at, at spring Grove. Uh, he, he's a man on a mission. That's for sure. And his practice partner every day is Marquise Holton from central dolphin. Oh, uh, there you go. He, there he's you on, go. he's on the staff as, as an assistant there really, you know, with, with the specific goal in mind of working with Travis Armstrong and getting That's him awesome. better and getting him tougher and getting a little bit more mission oriented. And I do feel like he's on a mission here to, to win this thing and to get a state medal. And uh, we'll see uh, section right. four um, Gettysburg being a runner up somewhat of a surprise, but I think we've talked about them being such a good dual team, but not always uh, the biggest factor in, in individual stuff. And you saw all that with, you know, in this tournament. Um, and I felt like um, Central York has, has their trio of guys that'll be really, really interesting to watch to Carter Davis, who spent a, a good chunk of time at 145. Since he dropped to 138, he's been outstanding and somebody that you got to watch there. Uh, Macon Myers is a kid. I mean, he, just like we talked about with Braschino, he might just be in need of a little bit of a breakthrough to shove him along on his way, but he, he's got some ability too. Uh, Ethan Miller, uh, late 285, long kind of athletic kid at 285. And, you know, that matchup could be an interesting one again at, at a weight class that's otherwise pretty wide open. So I, I'm, I tell you what, the Davis kid 
has has really kind of jumped on the scene here and um, is a guy that I, I feel like could possibly win 138 pounds here. And, and you know, he got hurt last year. You know, but the season we had, we actually wrestled Central York twice and we wrestled against them and he was in the lineup the first time and he got hurt and he was out of the lineup the second time. And I remember talking to the coaches down there, um, you know, and, and they both said that how, you know, he got hurt and he wasn't in. I just, I just really liked the way he wrestled the first, the first time against us and, and thought, thought a lot of the kid. And so to see him come out this year and, and do what he does, I mean, it's not overly shocking, but man, he's really came on the scene strong. And, and, and again, the, the Myers kid is a tough kid. I, I, and even the Miller kid, Jake Lucas wrestled him last year and, and, you know, I, I think Jake pinned him, but the kid, is a, is a, is a, is a good looking kid. I mean, he's, he's a long, he's, he's physical looking, he's strong. And I mean, he just, just matchup wise, body type wise, athleticism. I mean, I think he can get some guys in that 285 pound weight class and fits. And, and that's what they seem to be looking for. You know, th- this kid wrestled 215 at least as often as he wrestled 285 this year. So it could have gone either way, but I think they like the advantage that he's able to create by being the most athletic kid in his weight class. And we'll see if that pays off for him. He lost, uh, I was like a seven to two decision to Trevor Gallagher from Gettysburg um, right. who, who I would say was the favorite that weekend. Right. Um, Caden Dobbins. Uh, he, he's another one, you know, in that 152. he was a, a district finalist last year, lost to Josh Miller at 138 pounds. Looks really good at 152. He pinned Logan Newell who was state ranked, um, you know, won probably upwards of what, like 30 matches this year, yeah, pin yeah. Logan Newell in, in 27 seconds. So just another little reminder that Caden Dobbins isn't gone. I mean, the, 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 the road to a district title, you're going to have to go through that kid uh, to get there. So no, um, I mean, he's tough, he's tough. And a guy that started his career little and, and knows how to wrestle and now is getting bigger. Um, you know, those guys do, do tend to, to do pretty well. So. Let's let's bounce around these district brackets here real quick and just kind of yeah. hit, hit hit the high notes for for what you see and um, starting at 106. I mean the the thing that jumps out right away is uh, Liam Flanagan from Central Dolphin getting a shot uh, with Dean Hauser from Daniel Boone, who's a Section One champ in that quarterfinal round. Um, in all likelihood, it's uh, you know none none of this is foregone conclusion when you're trying to project who's going to wrestle who, um, but that right. that's a really strong matchup in that early round. And I think the bottom half of the bracket, you saw Jordan Williams run through um, a bunch of um, you know some of the, I think three out of the top four or five um, kids at 106 were in that that section two, and Jordan Williams from Hempfield won it. So he's coming from the bottom half of the bracket. He's going to have to probably go through uh, Lewis Malave for Manheim Township. Maybe Maybe you've, you've got um, him coming through, but you know, in that top half of the bracket, you've got Hauser and Flanagan likely in the quarters and you got Marco Tachi um, down there, maybe wrestling Phil Montez from Cumberland Valley in the quarters. Yeah. And I mean, even, even uh, the, the younger light part is, is down there and then in, in, in that upper bracket too. And he, and I mean, he's not a bad kid. So, you know uh, yeah, I mean th- that, that top half of that bracket does seem, you know, pretty heavy, but again, you know, it kind of shakes out, you know what I mean? Cause you come out in the quarters and you cross over and, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, in the winner's bracket, that, that top half is going to be fun to watch. Uh, pretty wide open. I think overall, it's, it's really yeah, hard to, I, if you had to try to pin me down to ask who was going to win it, I could make a case for Dean Hauser, Jordan I'm Williams, Flanagan yep. or Marco Tachi, you know, you can make a case for all of them. Um, 113, uh, you know, I, I think you hate to kind of look too pa- past it, but I think you have a pretty clear cut, um, Caden Williams and Nico Tachi rematch in all likelihood is going to happen. Um, Caden Williams is going to have probably a tough one with Jimmy Garcia from Wilson, the section one champ in the quarterfinal round, but otherwise, you know, no disrespect to anybody else. Travis Clawson's a pretty tough customer coming from section two out of Penn Manor, but, uh, Tachi and, and, and Caden Williams are, are pretty hefty favorites in my mind to get through the top and the bottom half. Uh, that's section two you know, weight class, 1313. I mean, Tachi Williams, Clawson. I mean, all three of those guys are, are good kids. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that weight class there though, I, I would say that, you know, if I was a betting man, I, I would probably put my money on seeing Tachi and Williams again in the finals. But again, this is why you wrestle, you know, and things happen and uh, you know, but some other guys, you, you know, you mentioned everybody else in there that I feel like could, could maybe make some noise. I don't know the Clawson kid, 
um, the Garcia kid from Wilson. Um, I, I agree with that. Um, that'll be interesting to see how it shakes out, but I think it's going to be a tall order for any of those guys to knock off Tachi or, or Williams. Looking at 120, you've got kind of a big three, as we alluded to before. Mason Lee Part, number one in the state right now, 32-0. and 0. Um, Rocco Fratelli from Northern, and you've got Camden Williams from Manheim Township, who in all, you know, looked like a state title contender, you know, maybe the favorite last year before he missed weight at States. And, and obviously you start right there, but then you look at the depth of this weight class. And I think that's what you mentioned this weight class before, but you're looking at Dallas Shore, Gabe Pekaitis, uh, Mark Paradigm, Gavin Richard, Damian Key from Dallas town, uh, Luke Menser, Jake Mitchell, Weston bear from Solanco. You know, if, if you're asleep at the wheel for, for one minute in this weight class, Dave, there's a lot of guys who, who can, who can get you. No, you're right. I, I, I mean, I, I like the sectional final that we were in section three final with Menser and Fratelli. I thought that was a, a you know, those two there are, are good guys. And even, you know, the Mitchell kid from Cumberland Valley coming back and getting third after losing to Fratelli. I mean, those, those three guys there are, are, are tough customers. And, uh, but you look at the depth of that weight class and it is, it is pretty, pretty deep weight class. And um, I, you know, I think in the, in the, uh, in the quarterfinals, you know, you're going to see, you're going to see a pretty good quarterfinal in uh um, Menser and Gavin Richard, you know what I mean, in the quarterfinals. And, um, you know, I, I still think, I, I think Mason Lightpart's going to be a tough, a tough customer for anybody in that weight. Um, you know, he just, again, just, just so tough on top. And, and, uh, but, you know, the kid from, uh, the, the Adams kid from York Suburban wrestled him pretty tough. I think the final was like four nothing. Yeah, you know, he yeah. beat him. So, you know, I mean, there, there's, and there's another kid that I think, uh, you know, could, could make some noise there. So again, I, I think uh, it'll be interesting to see how, um, no, I'm sorry, Tyler Adams from York, York Suburban. I said Richard. But, yeah. Um, again, though, that, that, that weight class is loaded. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there and see how that shakes out. Um, but I, I, I think if I, I feel pretty safe that saying that, you know, light part would, would be a finalist in that, in that weight class. So, yeah. And, and I think consistency and, and, and he doesn't take any moments off. He's got poise and composure and understands wrestling really well. My, my point was, so a couple things from this weight class is one, you know, Rocker Fratelli got beat by Camden Williams, um, wrestled him pretty tough for a while. I think he ended up getting, getting pinned by him, um, last year, but there's a big difference between where they are. I mean, this was Camden Williams peaking. He was hot. He had momentum. He had wrestled the whole year. Now you have Rocco Fratelli, you know, can he close that gap if they see each other in the semifinals? That's one thing. And then the other thing is when you look at the big three, one of those three Lightpart, Williams or Fratelli is not going to make it to the finals. And you better maintain your focus in that consolation bracket. If you do get knocked off or like you, if you don't get what you want, you better not uh, have that semi slide because there's a lot of guys who, who will be tough when you get down. Oh there. yeah. Oh yeah. And then that, that happens. And you know that as well as I do, man, you lose that semifinal match and you know, it, you know, that that's when guys are right, right for the picking, man. They come down, their head's not in it. And you know, maybe you, you lost early and you come storming back through you, you have some confidence, you have some momentum. And then, you know, you knock a guy like that off and that, that guy goes home and that's how that goes down sometimes. So I agree. That's going to be a, a, a tough bracket and um, you know, a real good one to watch. Looking at 126, I think you can say Carl Schindeldecker from Chambersburg, returning state finalist, two-time state medalist, uh, he a pretty heavy favorite in that one. But, you know, he's looking at, you know, even that Eli Long from Central York in round one, Seamus Mack probably from Hempfield uh, in the quarterfinals, Zach Luckenball maybe, and Luckenball has got to be Eli Gregoris from Big Spring in the first round. Uh, so you, that, that path to the finals is tricky. Uh, then in the bottom half of the bracket, Josh Hillard from Mannheim Township. Uh, you've got Trenton Walker from Carlisle. Clayton Kozer, I thought, wrestled really tough over the weekend um, at, at the at at the uh, sectional tournament. Uh, and Zach Emery from York Suburban. So th this one's got some depth too. It's got your favorites, uh, Schindeldecker and, and and Hillard probably being at the top of that list. But there are some other guys who are capable of surprising there. No, I, I, the one guy that uh, you know, and and again, the Snyder kid from Spring Grove, I was impressed with at a younger age and he was injured this year, I guess, and just came back now and he's four and one in the bracket. And I mean, it's tough for guys like that to get some momentum at the end of the year, but he, he had some experience and that's a guy where I was kind of wondering where he was at all year. And he just kind of showed up here in the, in the bracket at the end of the year, I get, got healthy, I guess, and, and came back. But uh, um, I, I like the Hillard kid. I, I think he's a, he's a tough kid from Manheim Township. 
Um, I mean, that would, that would be the guy that I would maybe kind of pencil in as coming through that bottom half, but um, you know, Schindeldecker again is, is the favorite there. And in my opinion, so. And for, and for good reason, he looked pretty good right. uh, at, at the sectional too. Looking yeah, at 132, um, you know, I think you, you have some some really good solid veterans there. Garrett Gear and Jared Fulton, who wrestled Matt Repo, is pretty tough in the sectional finals um, out there. Ivan Vega from Spring Grove, um, Aiden Bachman, sectional champ from Section Three. Uh, even Josiah Whitcomb, fourth place in, from Cumberland Valley. I, I think he's a guy that nobody really wants to wrestle all that much. Uh, he gets Matt Repo in round one, but this this in, in my eyes definitely Matt Repo's weight to lose. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm. I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that that'd be that'd be the favorite there. I, I feel pretty strongly in that. Um, but again, like for him, I mean, he, he you know his first round matchup with Whitcomb. I mean, that's not like a first round matchup you really want. You know what I mean? And um, I, I feel like those two kind of know each other from from you know long a long time ago. They're they're former friend, they're friends and and whatnot. But uh, I, I still think Matt's gonna be a, a a tough a tough one to to, to top in that weight class and. Uh, and I expect him to actually score some bonus at different points through that weight class. So, um, you know, I, I think, he, again, he's going to be tough. As far as the other spots and who comes through there, uh, I, I don't know. The gear kid from Garden Spot I really like. Um, you know, he he wrestled last year and qualified for the, uh, you know, the Super Region last year in Altoona. And, uh, you know, came back. He actually lost to Kyle Miller in the opening round and um, and came back and, and wrestled the whole way back to, to qualify. So, um, he's a tough kid too, but again, I, I, for him, I think that'd be a tall order to, to beat repo still. So. And, and Matt repo is just, in, in my opinion, looks a lot better, a lot stronger as a junior at 132 than he did a sophomore at 126. He looks like he's at the perfect weight this year. Why was it? I wasn't certain about that as a 126 pounder last, last year, uh, right. looking at 138, you know, we mentioned Carter Davis coming from that bottom uh, half of the bracket, you know, pretty tough road. Dom Dorado from Wilson, probably in the semifinals. I think Thaddy, Thad Krebs and Mike Beers are two solid grinder type kids, um, juniors, both of them, who, you know, they're going to make you work for it. But I still like Carter Davis to get the whole way through. Then Alicia from Anaheim Township, really strong kid, the favorite in that weight class. Curious to see, you know, Reese Palulek having a nice year for, for Redland. He's 25 and four. He's got, you know, state medal aspirations. Wyatt Dillon is a kid, a sophomore who it looks like he's gotten better and better and better as the year's going on so not not a slam dunk but i think alice probably wins this thing uh gets to the finals and then carter davis um is a, is a guy you know or gerardo there's going to be a tough customer waiting for him there yeah i i feel like uh that, that might be a pretty good semi you know a possible semi with with uh, davis and and gerardo um you know both both the the two and three seeds so if you were to put them out in the semis that'd be a good one to watch i i really like davis's trajectory right now i, I just think that that kid's wrestling tough um i, I think he's going to be an ex, you know he's going to be a tough out I, I i do i think uh you know I, I don't know if there's anybody in that weight class that can knock off alicia it's him i i feel so Looking at 145, we touched on this a bit earlier, but there's a really good chance that we see Reagan Lefever, um, district champ, uh, at 145 pounds last year. We see him wrestle Keaton Fisher from Conestoga Valley. Fisher has won two out of three matchups against them. So we're we're, we're probably going to have a barn burner right away um, in the top half of that bracket. You've got uh, Mike Trainer, who his, his presence looms pretty large in the bottom half there. But um, Noah Rice from York Suburban is, a, is another contender there. Uh, Dave Miller from Cumberland Valley. I don't know if there was a more surprising number one seed from section all weekend <laughs> than him. No disrespect, but that, no, that yeah, was yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, the most surprising number one seed, in my opinion, from sectionals gets gets that tough matchup with Mike Trainer early. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that that weight class at that section, you know, it was a little down. But, and and Miller had a season where he did catch a lot of pins, you know what I mean, at different at different points. And, you know, for a sophomore, he has a bright future, um, obviously a tough first round matchup. But I, I'll tell you what, don't count out the Townsend candy, the kid either, like, you know, Jackson Townsend from Gettysburg. I mean, he, he's a kid that was at districts last year. Um, he has, he has 30 some wins this year for Gettysburg. And, uh, you know, that first round, you better watch it. You know, he's a kid that last year, he came out in the first round and he beat the other kid from Mannheim Township. Um, and I, I can't think of the kid's name, the, the 70 pounder, maybe uh, the Mannheim Township kid. Oliveria. Um, he, Oliveria, that's it. He yeah. beat him last 
year in the opening round of districts. You know, everybody was expecting to see Oliveri and Belga and it's in the quarters and Townsend and, and I'm knocking him off. So I, I can tell you this, that, you know, and that's another thing that, that people need to realize the one hour weigh in, like you weigh in and then you wrestle in an hour and, you know, or, or close to, you know, um, when, when the tournament starts, but you know, that first match, you know, I mean, you're first, you're down to weight, you know what I mean? You're making weight. You got to get a good warm up in and the Townsend kid will be ready to go. So um, Fisher, should not look past him should not look past him so but uh, I yeah he, i mean I, that I, weight I, class is wide open too so yeah i think townsend i think chris haynes would love to see him be a little bit more consistent know what he's getting from him uh on a, on a day in day out basis but what if you catch the best of him what you're alluding to um he's a tough kid yes. we talked we talked yeah. uh, you know a good bit about 152 i'm just going to refresh the names real, real quick then we'll skim by that one frontino at the top griffin gonzalez uh, district champ last year they're likely to meet in the quarterfinal round uh jt hogan gabe belga likely to ma- uh, meet up in the quarterfinal round too belga likely to see um jt hogan likely to see caden dobbins who he beat one nothing earlier this season and then maybe to get that rematch with Frontino there in the, in the finals, if all goes to plan, uh, looking at 160, you know, Ryan Garvick, probably, you know, a, a pretty solid favorite there, but you know, Jake Cherry's tough. Uh, the Rathman kid from Cocalico is tough. Uh, Braschino, as we, as we talked to might be kind of, um, riding a little bit of a wave right now, getting that con- a wave of confidence that he needs to get, kind of take that next step. Uh, making Myers from, from central York. I remember yeah, him, him and Cherry in the quarters. Would be a good one. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You're going to see some good matchups really in all these quarterfinal rounds at 160. Uh, Macon Meyer is coming along. David Woolley, um, veteran, done a lot of wrestling for, for Warwick. Him and Anthony D'Angelo, the sophomore from Carlisle on round one is one of the better first round matchups um, in this tournament. And then you got Nick Nettleton, a pretty experienced senior at the bottom here. You've got, you know, there's a lot of landmines if you're a favorite like a Ryan Garvick in this, in this weight class. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and uh, I, I, it's tough to pick. I, I think, you know, Garvik would be the favorite, but anything can happen. And it's going to be interesting to see how this one shakes out. You got some guys with experience and uh, you know, like you said, Nettleton and, and Myers and Braschino and Cherry and oh, yes, it's a, some parody there in that weight class. Uh, 172. This is one that I, I've really been watching and waiting at this 172 pound weight class to figure out who's going to do what I think. I think Tucker Hogan is a cut above the rest and he'll have a chance to prove that here. Then you've got Oliveria super athletic sophomore from Manheim township uh, section two champ in the bottom half of the bracket. And you've got Cole Bartram section three champ uh, who, when he's at his best and he is physical and he's beating up your head, he's his hands are maybe the heaviest in this weight class. If he's at his best, I like him to beat Oliveria. Need to see him kind of come out with some aggression there. But I think that semifinal is one of my most anticipated semifinals, assuming they get, they get that work done, which, you know, Bartram's got to go through Cam Fickett's from Hempfield. Tyler Withers won 37 matches for, for Gettysburg um, so far this year. Jamal Lewis is pretty tough, pretty from, tough York from York Suburban. In the, in the bottom half of the bracket so this is um you know no, no pushovers but i i really like that collection of top three hogan oliveria and bartram yeah i do too i i i'm a, i agree with the semifinal there i, I love the oliveria bartram semifinal that's going to be a good one both those guys can score some points uh, looking at 189, Johnny Miller really liked what what I he, he was at the CB kickoff class. He ran into Sonny Sasso from Nazareth and uh, one of very few guys who made it six minutes with Sonny Sasso, which I think you need to get some extra ribbon or something for that. Uh, so he's at the top of the bracket. Aiden Height, who's coming on for Chambersburg. He has some good, solid ranked wins. Um, he had pinned Jim, Jim Ellis from Ephrata, uh just a few weeks ago. He'll get Jim Ellis probably in the quarterfinal round. Um, Dylan Bard, experienced kid from Hempfield. Diesel Kozu, I really like the junior. He made a huge leap this year uh, coming out of Shippensburg. So you got some other names here, but um, I, I just don't, no disrespect to anybody else, but I think this is Johnny Miller the whole way through. I agree. I agree. He, he's going to, he's the guy to beat in this weight class. And I just don't see anybody at that level, you know, with, with Johnny. Um, and, and I feel like you know, he's a big, strong physical kid. And um, I mean, you know, the, the number two seed essentially is a sophomore in Aiden height, who's got a great career so far and has a bright future, but that's going to be a tall, tall order for him um, if they would meet in the finals. 
Looking at that 215 pound weight class, the kind of bottom line at, you know, we talked about it a little bit before, but the difference between the number one guy and the number, let's say six or seven guy in the district at 215 isn't re- it's a pretty thin margin from one all the way through that that rate so travis armstrong sitting at the top deserving um, of that he's looked outstanding this year jose garcia at the bottom section two champ unbeaten from from jp mccaskey um zach evans who was a fargo all-american who he missed some time earlier in the season uh looked to be coming back strong kind of got i i would imagine he wants to see travis armstrong again after getting pinned by him at, at sectionals Samuel Rodriguez, uh, 32 and two from Gettysburg. When he's at his best, he's a, a really tough kid. Ryan McMillan, 30 and four, sophomore from Wilson, one of the top young guys at this weight class. Uh, yeah, Robert Huck thing- from Southwestern. There, there, there's not a lot of, there, yeah. there's not going to be a round off for anybody. The thing I like about the McMillan kid is, guess who his workout partner was last year from Wilson as a, you know, as a freshman. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, him, he was working out with the state runner up every day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, so. Uh, you know, that, and, and you do see that a lot in wrestling. Like, you know, you have seniors that are real tough and then they graduate and then the guys that were around their weight the next year sometimes do, you know, do really well. And, and you see that a lot. So, um, I mean, he's going to be a tough out too, but he's right in the thick of things. Look at the 285. Um, you've got, I think, a pretty pretty good one-two punch, uh, pretty clearly established as favorites, Leighton Schmick in the top half of the bracket. Trevor Gallagher on the bottom, you know, one thing, you know, interesting to, to, to watch here, I think is you, you've seen Leighton Schmick kind of come out of nowhere. He wasn't a name that anybody was circling, you know, and, and he he's done some pretty good damage at the district level. So now he's got to get to a point where, okay, you're the favorite. You're the guy people are yep. coming after you're, you're, you're the, the, you've got that bullseye. He's transitioning to be that guy. I think he's going to handle it well, but you know, just like 215, look at Tyrese Washington, Hunter Bisking, Ethan, Ethan Miller, and Ben Stewart. Like those are t- both of those are first round matchups that could go either direction. Caleb right. Bussman from Hempfield, Michael Hershey's pretty tough from Spring Grove. You know, there, there's a, a bunch of guys here who can trip you up if you're not laser focused. I like the Hershey kid from Spring Grove. He's an imp- impressive looking kid for a sophomore. Um, you know, maybe a little young yet and a little experienced to do something here yet. But I mean, that's a guy, that's a name to remember for the future, I think. And uh, again, a sophomore, sophomore heavyweight, um, you know, has, you know, 20 some wins as a sophomore. I, th- I think he's going to be a guy in the future. But for now, um, this is Schmick's weight class, I feel like. And, you know, he's going to be tough out. So District three championships coming up Friday afternoon, 3 p.m. start at Spring Grove Area High School. Uh, get through the quarterfinals, a couple rounds of consolations on Friday, then back at it on Saturday, semifinals, consolations, then into the, the, the placement matches. Uh, I'm assuming mid to late afternoon for that. And I think, you know, for me, Dave, just refreshing to see a little bit of normalcy here, to see these brackets nice and full. And I think for everybody who's competing here, it's probably refreshing to know that you're back to having that weekend off and not going to Altoona to compete against the Whippio. Yeah, that's that's an added bonus, right? Brutal. Oh um, my gosh, brutal. You know, I, I, and I feel like, you know, from day two of, of districts and on is where you really draw that line you know what i mean and you know to some of the best guys in the state i mean you come to day two of districts um you know most everything has kind of been washed out and the guys that are there um are are are, you know i mean they're wrestling um in in one of the toughest the toughest state in the country uh, in high school wrestling and uh you know like i said that day two of districts and on um you're going to see some good wrestling so um you know, and again, like, you know, you know, we, we go through here, we talk about the different kids and the matchups we think we're going to see. And here's the deal. Like, you're not, nothing's guaranteed. You know, you don't know what can happen. Um, and, you know, anything can happen. That's what's great about this sport is, you know, guys can get pinned and, and you know, you can, you might not have been able to beat somebody, but you can pin them and injuries happen and DQs happen and things happen. And, you know, that's why you wrestle it. And like I said, we, uh, I mean, no, no, no disrespect to the other guys in the bracket, but just from a fan standpoint of what we're kind of looking at and what we think um, could shake out. So good luck to all the wrestlers this weekend. This is a great tournament. And uh, one of my favorites, you know, you kind of know everybody, you, you know, the teams, you know, the coaches. So it's always a good tournament and uh, always at a, a, you know, Spring Grove has run a great venue there, um, you know, the past couple of years with districts and, uh, you know, I expect nothing less. So 
going to be a fun weekend back to normal here with district three wrestling Friday and Saturday. That's Dave Heckard. I'm Dustin Hawkins with, we will be back next week to recap districts, maybe look ahead to Southeast regionals and double a with district with the triple a guys being off. So excited to see what happens this weekend. Excited to be back next week on the Penn live wrestling podcast to recap all of it. And we'll see you next time.